Greetings friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sasha Vedic. Welcome. Do you, have you ever heard of the man called Gregory Town Targus, whose signs and lying wonders affected beliefs? And uh, we know also from the Bible that other signs and lying wonders will deceive even more. November the 17th is observed by some Greco-Roman Catholics in honor of the 3rd century bishop known as Gregory Thaumaturgus, who, whom they call also call Saint Gregory of Neo Caesarea. Although uh, I have never heard really of, of him, uh, uh, I've never heard really of him. Uh, it was during the research of Dr. Bob Thiel that he was doing related to Fatima, and uh, only then uh, did he realize how much this person affected the history and doctrine of the Greco-Roman Protestant churches, as well as to a degree the Church of God. Yet many have never heard of this uh, of this Gregory Thaumaturgus. Around 238 to 244 AD, Gregory, who died roughly 270 AD, seems to have been the first to have claimed to have seen an apparition of Mary. This apparition allegedly appeared to him before he became a bishop. Gregory is also known as Gregory the Wonder Worker and Saint Gregory Thaumaturgus Wonder Worker. He had been trained by allegorical teacher Oregon in Alexandria. Related to Gregory, Robertson Donaldson reported that, quote, he was believed to have been gifted with a power of working miracles, which he was constantly exercising. The demons were subject to him. He could cast his cloak over a man and cause his death. He could bring the presiding demons back to their shrine. Now, because Gregory's power over demons and other so-called wonders were apparently accepted by many, he had influence. It seems that Gregory's enchantments and or sorceries which are forbidden in Isaiah 47, verse 5 through 17, and Nahum, chapter 3, verse 4, along with his imperial persecutions, may have greatly assisted the Greco-Roman faction in essentially eliminating the organized faithful in Asia Minor. Gregory was also a factor in the Marian cults that began to rise up around that time. His writings teach praise and excessive devotion to the so-called Holy Virgin, including the blasphemous teachings that Mary blotted out Eve's transgressions. He was amongst the earliest ones to promote the expression of the Holy Trinity and the pagan idea that humans had an immortal soul. Now, uh, here is a quote related to this uh, man and his works. Here is a quote from uh, his homily concerning the Holy Mother of God, section 35. It was translated by the, from the Armenian by Conibert, the expositor of 5th series, volume 3, 1896, page 173, and you find, you can find that translation even on internet. So here is the, uh, here is a, 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 a section on so-called Holy Mother. Here the mystery of the Holy Trinity and the Trinity, that is, was revealed by the Archangel to the Holy Virgin according to the Gospel. And this is from Gregory Thaumaturgus, homily concerning the Holy Mother of God. We prove also that then that the soul is simple, that what is simple is immortal. If therefore the soul is not corrupted by the evil proper to itself, and the evil of the soul is cowardice, intemperance, envy, and the like, and all these things do not despoil of its powers of life and action, it follows that it is immortal. So this is from his homily on the soul, chapter 5 and chapter 6, translated by S.D.F. Salmond. Uh, and this is, you can find this in anti nicene Fathers, Volume 6, edited by Alexander Roberts, James Donaldson, and A. Cleveland Coxey, Buffalo, New York, Christian Literature Publishing Corporation, 1886. Now, friends, you need to know that the Gospel never uses the expression Trinity, much less Holy Trinity. And you should also know that the Gospel does not teach that the soul is immortal. To the contrary, in the book of Ezekiel, in the Roman Catholic Dewey Rames Bible translation, we have a couple of teachings in Ezekiel 18, uh, chapter 4, the soul that sins, the same shall die, and in Ezekiel 18, verse 20, that the soul that sins, the same shall die. However, Gregory has put his own interpretation on scripture. In the Trinity case, he was referring to Luke chapter 1, verse 35, which does not prove that doctrine, and for the immortality of the soul, he did not cite scripture. 
Gregory was a major reason that the Trinity started to be accepted much outside of Montanist circles, and Oregon too was a factor in this acceptance of the Trinity. Protestants, of course, accepted the Trinity, yet few realized that Gregory's Marian visions played a role in this. The Catholic Encyclopedia claims that Gregory the Wonder Worker developed the first creed with the word meaning Trinity. Here is the quote from the Catholic Encyclopedia. The first creed in which it appears uh, is that of Oregon's pupil, Gregory Thaumaturgus, in his Ectesis te Tes Pisteos, composed between 260 and 270, he writes, quote, There is therefore nothing created, nothing subject to another in the Trinity, nor is there anything that has been added it, uh, as though it once had not existed, but had entered afterwards. Therefore the Father has never been without the Son, nor the Son without the Spirit. And the same Trinity is immutable and unalterable forever. It is manifest that a dogma so mysterious presupposes a divine revelation. End of the quote. Now this last statement should give many pause, as it was allegedly from seeing one or more apparitions of Mary, and supposedly the Apostle John, that Gregory the Wonder Worker gained his so-called revelations. Gregory was a supporter of Rome and Alexandria. He was a major factor in spreading more acceptance of the Trinitarian position, especially throughout Asia Minor and Antioch. Because of his miraculous abilities, as they are, de as they are described, his ideas apparently had more acceptance than what the Bible taught, and many were adopted. Notice something else he wrote. Here is the quote from his second homily on the Annunciation of the Holy Virgin Mary. O Holy Virgin, she is the ever-blooming paradise of incorruptibility, wherein is planted a tree that gives life and that furnishes to all the fruits of immortality. Does the Holy Virgin, while still in, in the flesh, maintain the incorruptible life? The Holy Virgin has surpassed even the perfection of the patriarchs. End of the quote. Friends, the Bible does not teach that Mary led an incorruptible life. The Bible teaches that all have sinned, Romans 3, verse 23, except Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 and 15. Stating or implying that Mary did not uh, sin is in biblical error. Perhaps it should be added that Dr. Ludwig Ott's 20th century book, Fundamentals of Catholic Dogma, teaches this. The doctrine of the Immaculate Conception of Mary is not explicitly revealed in Scripture. Neither the Greek nor the Latin fathers explicitly teach the Immaculate Conception of Mary. So, uh, end of the quote. So this is this was published, printed in 1974, and uh, this is again from Dr. Ludwig Ott's 20th century fund a book, Fundamentals of Catholic Dogma. But it was more than Marian ideas that Gregory Thaumaturgus influenced. Bishop Gregory the Wonder Worker was involved in the councils looking into Paul of Samosata, who at that time was considered the Greco-Roman Bishop of Antioch, according to Robert A. and Donaldson, Volume 20, page 3. Gregory assisted in getting Greco-Roman influence to succeed there. The prophet Isaiah warned that the Lady of the Kingdoms used sorceries since her youth, Isaiah chapter 47, verse 5 and verse 12. Gregory's use of powers, so-called powers, in the formative years of the Greco-Roman Confederation seems consistent with that biblical prophecy because he also had influence in various parts of Asia Minor. Gregory Thaumaturgus, and uh, you can find about him in canonical epistles, uh, the fourth one and the seventh one, Anti-Nicene Fathers, and also there are other references to him, like in Drivers Joe Wee, and what Joe Wee portraits of spiritual authority, religious power in early Christianity, Byzantine, and the Christian Orient, volume 137 of Religions in the Greco-Roman World, published by Brill in 1999, pages 107 and 108. Actually, in Antioch, with the successor of Paul of Samosata, we seem to see for the first time a bishop outside of Italy that was apparently installed because of direction from the church in Rome, and the mystic Gregory Thaumaturgus was involved in this. This, to a degree, marked a major expansion of influence of the Church of Rome outside of Italy. It also had some previous influence in Corinth. The Catholic Encyclopedia credits his influence in expanding their church, which it calls the Christian Church, in this following quote. Here is the quote. Among those who build up the Christian Church, 
extended its influence and strengthened its institutions, Gregory of Neo Caesarea holds a very prominent place to attract the people of the festivals to the festivals in honor of the martyrs. We learn that Gregory organized profane amusements as an attraction for the pagans who could not understand the solemnity without some pleasures of a less serious nature than the religious ceremony. Sadly, it's partly because of Gregory that so-called Christianity took on more of the trappings of pagan worship and the Marian cults had been allowed to grow and flourish. Gregory greatly influenced theological thought and several widely accepted false doctrines were originated and and or promoted by him. The fact that he reportedly caused the death of enemies by throwing his cloak upon them has not sufficiently diminished his influence, but should have. Well, some times ago, we put out on our uh, on our uh, continuing Church of God channel, we put sermonette uh, entitled Gregory Thaumaturgus, Signs and Lying Wonders. And uh, we want to draw your attention, friends, to the fact that very few people realize how a demonically influenced leader, man from Neo Caesarea, impacted doctrines in the Greco-Roman Church. It is important for you to know, because Gregory the Wonder Worker claimed to receive messages from an apparition he believed was Jesus' mother Mary. He pushed the Trinity, an Antichrist creed, and the immortal soul teaching. Gregory also is celebrated as a saint by the Roman Catholics for pushing profane entertainment and festivals to attract pagans. He allegedly had the power to cause death by tossing his cloak on someone. The uh, Apostle Paul warned of signs and lying wonders, and said that started in his day, which it did not, with which it did actually start with his day, with Simon the Sorcerer in Acts chapter 8, also known as Simon Magus. Gregory Thaumaturgus had demonic signs and wonders and said he learned them from apparitions. The prophet Isaiah warned about the virgin daughter of Babylon who used sorceries, this is the same mystery Babylon of Revelation 17, that comes to her end in Revelation 18. So in that very teaching about Gregory, Gregory Thaumaturgus' Science and Lying Wonders, Dr. Bob Thiel gives some background about Gregory and warns about those who walk by sight and not by, and not by faith. Well, most of the professing Christian world accepts one or more beliefs promoted by Gregory Thaumaturgus. Now the Bible also points to even more persuasive Science and Lying Wonders in the future, it's prophesied in Second Thessalonians chapter two. In Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse twelve. Sorry, verse nine. We'll start with verse nine. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. <coughs> verse eleven. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but did but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see, nearly everyone alive at that time will be deceived. Do you have enough love of the truth to not fall for them? Perhaps if you think so, you should not be so sure. So uh, we need to speak about this and give you this warning beforehand, before those lying wonders start to be so prominent that yes, in the past there were those who were using satanic powers to deceive many, and yes, more delusions and more lying wonders are on the way, and they will happen in our time. They'll be uh, exacted by a person called the the the, the, uh, the man of sin, the son of perdition. So, do you have enough love for the truth to resist all that deception and to remain steadfast to the very end? That's a good question, friends. But that's something that all of us need to prove by living by faith and not by sight. A little by living by what is written in the Bible itself and not by what we see with our own eyes. Uh, for more detailed analysis about the world, world events and trends, you can find on our website www.bibleprophecynews.net. Uh, Feel free to visit us. Feel free to contact us as well. Until next time. Goodbye, friends.